Hello and welcome to Matthew Reads, I guess. Today I'm going to be talking about graphic novels and manga. Dun, dun, oh lord. So yeah, um, in terms of like the books that I suppose, or not just the books, the types of books that I tend to read, you know, I, I mean you can see from the shelf behind me and I do have another shelf outside of my room, because that one, the author's names only go to J there, that's fun. But yeah, in terms of like the type of stuff I read, I tend to lean way more heavily to like full novel length things over like everything else. And yeah, in terms of everything else, I do mean like, you know, short story collections, poetry, non-fiction, and graphic novels, things like that. And you know, to be honest, I don't even think I've, you know, consumed enough like non-fiction, poetry, or like short story collections to warrant making a roundup video of them. I literally I think the only short stories like that I've even read in recent time was Janelle Monet's book. But yeah, I have, however, you know, read enough graphic novels slash manga to throw them into a roundup video. And for a long-winded intro, that's what today is. I'm just gonna be talking about, you know, some of the graphic novels and some of the manga that I've enjoyed. I will say, as like another little like, I guess footnote, like with the way that I do consume like graphic novels and manga, because they do tend to be, you know, shorter or quicker reads, I tend to like consume them all in like one sitting, whereas with like a full length novel, it might take me a week or two to get through it, depending on how I'm feeling. And like because of that, and like because I consume them so quickly, I often like don't make notes, or like when I've done it, I haven't made enough notes to warrant like a full video. You know, hence why I'm, you know, collating the bitches in <laughs> like this video. And I will say also because of that, like the ones that I'm talking about today, I'm not going to be going into them in like heavy detail. I'm pretty sure for most of them will just be like a quick overview of what happens in them. And then like my general thoughts, I think. Also, I'm not one of those people, because I have very limited room where I am right now, I don't have the space to just like get a pile of graphic novels or books just like on my desk here. I just don't, so I'm just gonna like insert images of the covers of the like the versions that I've got. But yeah, first up is Bloom by Kevin Panetta. This one, I like, I remember buying this a good long while ago and according to my purchase history it was back in 2019 and for some reason I think or like when I first saw that I assumed it was just like a regular novel and like I ended up buying it thinking that and then when it turned up I was like why is this so large and then I realized it was a graphic novel but like please don't question why I didn't realize it was a graphic novel sometimes I don't read things I just see the nice covers and I'm like yeah that looks gay I'll read that but you know, it has been like a good long while since I read this, and do I really remember what happened? No, but I remember enjoying it. You can see it's literally, ooh, it's literally right there on my shelf next to the little, you know, plant painting there. Hey, queen. What? Um, ciao. Anyway, so. But you know, from what I remember, and I briefly saw it pop up on TikTok as well, which, you know, brought it back into my brain, that it was like some straight up bakery romance, like, it didn't have much else to it. But then, to be fair, since it's a graphic novel, it's told in pictures so it can't really, you know, use all that many words. Shockingly. You know, it follows Ari, who no longer wants to spend his life at this bakery he used to love working at as a kid. And then the love interest is Hector, someone who loves baking as much as Ari wants to get away from baking. And again, from what I remember, it was nice. <laughs> like, I know that's such a basic thing to say, but I mean in the sense of it was nice. It was like wholesome, whole wheat-some, if you will. Baking puns. You know, it was just like nice and not too think brain heavy. Like it had a, you know, basic romance plot that it wanted to achieve and I think it did that. So Fence by C.S. Picat is another one I've read some of. And you know, I say some of because I own and have read the first three volumes, but I haven't gone any further than that, and to be honest, I don't think I'm going to, to be completely honest with it. It's one of those that, like, hasn't necessarily done anything wrong, no. It just didn't grab me like I wanted it to, that is literally just the case. And like, the first three volumes haven't inspired me to go on any further, so like, why would I at this point? 
like, to be honest, I think it might also have been the case that, like, the plot didn't move on, you know, as much in those first three volumes as I wanted it to. Like, and I, I'll be honest, I don't remember, this sounds horrible, caring about the characters enough in that, you know? And there was, like, only so much thinking about fencing while the characters take a backseat, you know, Charlie XX featuring Carly Rae Jepsen tease. Gay rights! That I could take before, you know, I gave up on it. And I'll be honest, I think I only ended up reading these in the first place because I'd read the Captive Prince trilogy, you know, also by Picard. However, I, to be honest, I only read that trilogy was when I was, like, getting started in queer literature. And I think it was one of those at the time I thought was a sleigh, but, like, now that I've read so much more widely within the queer literature sphere, I can see it's probably one of those that's kind of crickets at this point. Still, um, according to my notes, uh, Fence follows Nicholas Cox who gets a place in this competitive fencing school and is eager to prove himself. Basically that gig. There was some, I think he was like the grandson or the son of like a fencing prodigy, I don't remember which. Anyway, that was my thoughts on Fence. <laughs> So, I will say I haven't really read all that much manga, just like, in general. I do remember when I was younger, I had a couple volumes of, like, the Yu-Gi-Oh! manga, like, the very first two, I think. Like, before they even started, like, the card game. Like, I remember the Pharaoh full-on playing, like, gambling with, like, money on the back of his hands and then, like, stabbing a knife down onto the money. It was something like that. And then I think I also had a couple of the Pokemon ones. But yeah, um, as I'm writing this, the only other manga that I've read is Classmates, you know, volumes one through three by, and I'm gonna have to read the name off the notes because I don't want to butcher it, uh, Asumiko Nakamura. Now, there are more volumes to Classmates, but like I've only read, you know, volumes one to three because volumes one to three, they like cover one story like from start to finish, like at the end of volume three, the story that started in volume one is done. Still, I mean, Classmates is like a BL manga, so its main selling point is, you know, the male-male relationship. And like, if I'm not mistaken, like BL like as a genre, is more like commonly referred to in like East and Southeast Asia. You know, to my knowledge, like a lot around like Korea, Thailand and Japan. You know, the vibe of this one is that Hikaru always thought his classmate Rihito was a bit of a snob, but then one day he finds Rihito practicing a song in an empty classroom and ends up agreeing to be, you know, Rihito's music tutor. And then in a shock twist to everyone, the two start getting closer, and it's very much the gigorama of will they just remain classmates, or, you know, become something more. And I mean, I think the thing that, like, convinced me to read Classmates as, like, my first BL manga was that, like, when I was, like, just looking online at, like, mangas, I think it was, like, a review of this page that said, you know, Classmates was, like, a lot tamer and like more lighthearted than Nakamura's usual work. And I think that was the bit that got me because yes, there is a time and a place for heavy stuff, but I'm not always in the mood for that sort of heavy stuff and I'm not always in the mind frame where I can consume heavy stuff. So that's why I chose Classmates. But yeah, in terms of like the story itself, it's very much like a first love kind of plotline for the both of them, I believe. Or at least that was the vibe that I got. Like both Hikaru and Rahito, you know, Spoiler alert, once the two got together, as they often do in BL. <laughs> I don't know why that was a shock. But, like, a lot of what they were doing was, like, navigating first love or, like, a first relationship. And, like, in terms of conflict, that is where not all of it, but, like, a lot of it did stem from. You know, and they're also students, so it, there is, the, like, the looming thing of, like, what's gonna happen to the two of them and, like, their relationship once they finish high school. And, you know, it, like, after reading that, it definitely did make me want to, like, go and read other ones. And, like, I definitely have looked into others, and perhaps I have already ordered five volumes of one. Who is to say? And, you know, perhaps there will be a video coming in the future on them. But, you know, now I feel like there's no other graphic novel that I could finish this video off on than Heartstopper by Alice Oseman. <laughs> 
And you know, I'm not gonna lie, I can be one of those people that can like put on my snug hat. Also, why has my camera started going crunchy now? Love that for me. But yeah, I can put on my smug hat and say that I have read the graphic novels before the show came out. Oh wow. There we go, that is my smug era done, you're welcome. But like, the only record I could find of myself like buying the volumes online was that like, I bought volume 3 in February of 2021. So by that logic, I obviously must have gotten volumes 1 and 2 before that. Because like, in that order was only volume 3. And now, I will say, I am honestly just happy that the show even exists. Because, like, while I was, you know, watching the show, I was watching it and, like, remembering, like, oh, I remember that, like, from the graphic novels as well. And, I mean, I'm not really sure what I can say, you know, about Heartstopper that hasn't already have been said by everyone else. And also, if I really wanted to capitalise on it, I probably should have made this video, like, a couple of months ago when, you know, Heartstopper was at its peak. Perhaps I should have done, but it's too late and what's done has been done already. But yeah, um, especially like in the first, um, you know, the first volume, I'm not going to cover the others, but I remember the first volume being very wholesome, very sweet. And like I said, as you get through the volumes, more serious stuff does get explored and it gets very dramatic. Mm, looking at you, the Paris trip. But yeah, like, I'm a big fan of both, you know, Nick and Charlie. I feel like it was very British, and like, the show as well. I don't think I'd ever seen a more British depiction of a high school. <laughs> but I mean, to be fair, I think my favourite character in the entire series is probably Tori. But yeah, I'm honestly just like, so happy that the show blew up the way that it did. Like, it's what the queers deserve. At this point, Trix... The dolls are the dolls. Like, it makes me so happy when queer media gets mass attention and, like, bonus points for the media being good. And, you know, to be honest, I think that's gonna be it for this video. I sadly don't have, like, a clever way to end it. And again, I don't really have anything that I can say about Heartstopper that won't have already been said. But, yeah... I mean, I guess to close out, uh, let me know, you know, what's your favourite graphic novel? What's your favourite manga? Have you even read any? Either, you know, let me know either way in the comments. And you know, feel free to like the video if you liked it, subscribe if you'd really like, and hopefully I'll see you next time. Okay, bye.